Hi. So now let's see uh, what are the different charts that you can use for temporal data with D3. So I'm not going to go into too much detail so I can show you more charts, but from the previous sessions, now you know how to build these, these charts. So let's start analyzing how to start creating these. Like for instance, this is a simple one that is only showing like a one line chart. And then the whole idea in here is that remember that you're selecting only one element. So that's why we are appending only one element. And then you're passing a line generator. Remember that those line generators come from D3 shape. And this is how we are specifying an X accessor and a Y accessor, in this case, date and value. And those come from these two scales, okay? So we have a scale linear for Y and a scale UTC that I think I showed you before. It's a scale that you can use for um, um, time zones whenever you want to work with the UTC. Mike also likes uh, separating the axes. So you have here an axis bottom and an axis left for X and Y. And he's appending that, appending the Gs and then calling the axis in here. Um, and then also the view box. So as you can see, it's very, it's very simple once you know how to do it. If you wanna create multiple lines, remember that we saw an example like that before, then remember that you have to group all the data for that line uh, uh, together. If you want to create an area chart, uh, the code is going to be extremely similar. Um, then you still are going to be using only one path. In this case, um, you're going to be using an area, which also comes from D3 shape. And if I can find it, here it is. And then this one also has an accessor. Notice that it does have a value here that you can use for x and y so if you change a value for this then you're going to see that it's going to change like the baseline for it so you can play with that and get really interesting things with that this is only for one line if you want to create multiple then you should start stacking and then you already know how to do the stacking for those what else is interesting from here uh, one of the interesting things from this is that remember that when you actually change the size of the uh, of the chart uh, the d3 axis like uh, scale time or in this case a scale utc is going to uh, move to to show like different values so if you uh, let's see if we can find like the multiple uh, in chart like that was in there um come back come back uh Oh, I saw it. My chart, and then of course my internet is really slow. Uh, I saw an example in here. Um, let's go with only line chart and see if we can find it. Mm, come on. If not, then I'm going to have like seems like the recording is slowing this too much. So while that includes, let me go here for this radial area chart. So remember, this is another representation. In this case, it's temporal. Um, this is a very nice one and, and curated from Mike Bostock. It's the same concept. And then the key for doing these things, like the paths are exactly the same. In this case, he's adding uh, some areas that are the borders for the errors and then a line in the middle for, for the actual values. And then the key for this is that when you create your scale, instead of uh, going into a range that goes uh, from X from zero to the Y, then you're going from zero to MatPy. And by doing that, then you're creating a scale that is actually the one that is going to allow you to go around the circle. The same goes in here. Why it's not going to be going uh, from zero to the height or the height from zero but from the inner radius to the outer radius. And then you can change all of those parameters to see how it works. Um, then once you have that, then uh, here on the line, you can change the radius depending on what attribute you get, and then you get the, the nice chart for that. Um, that applies for uh, area charts and the other elements. There are other element, uh, ones in there that you can check, like the basics of doing this. The, the key is just 
making sure like for instance in this case like that is drawing a line from the time it, the price it opens to the price of closing and then choosing the color depending on um, the, the value of it. See if the price was uh, positive then you get um, one color if not get the other and if it is the same then it changes in the middle and as you can see in here. So every time you add more elements it's just a matter of, of drawing more elements in there. For drawing things like the horizon chart uh, which is one of my favorites. You can also see the coding here for all of these stocks. Uh, basically, what you need to do once more is to start creating paths. Uh, Mike goes a little bit uh, more um, fancier, in a way to say, here with clip paths. Uh, so basically what this does is that it tries to cut everything at that level and then it's going to be using that in the different paths that you use for drawing the elements. And as you can see here, then uh, it's just a matter of drawing the elements and the magic it's happening just in here with how much overlapping it is going to be doing with that. So one of the ones that I really like doing for temporal data is uh, doing uh, using scale ordinals for creating these calendar views. In this case, it's grouping things by month, by week, by year, and then by elements, and, and each day of the week, sorry. And then when you look at the code for these type of things, then uh, you see all of the different elements. He's using rectangles for, for the marks. And then uh, it's just a matter of choosing your right uh, scales. So you have a like a color scale for quantize. And then uh, it has all of these elements that is basically doing the computation and deciding what type of, of scale you're going to be using in those elements. Like the basic idea of that, it's using, as you can see here, is actually uh, making use of some of the functions that D3 time has uh, for converting and making sure that you're stepping into the different elements. So for these type of things and also for creating things like uh, life flow and things like that, it's always the same concept. Just use a scale time and then scale Y and then start changing the marks and the aggregations that you have in there.